Oh man, I never thought I'd see the day, but here we are, another episode of Out of Focus, featuring yours truly, the Crimson Blur. Uh, I know I said I'd do them weekly, but I got lazy, very predictably. Uh, but here we are, you know, I got, I got, we got a good episode this time. Uh, we're going to talk about control legality, hot off the back of the recent discussion, the heated debate uh, around the Smashbox controller. Uh, that Hitbox and the homie Gravy are touting. Uh, Gravy, stand-up guy. I think a lot of the stuff that he's saying is, uh, and, and Hitbox as well. I think I think they're really trying to make the community better uh, with this technology. But I want to talk about you know where I stand on this. Uh, just to preface it, I'm actually on the opposite side of the fence. I think that it should absolutely not be legal. But um, I want to I want to kind of present a little bit of both sides and and, and make you guys. Uh, Make you guys able to make an informed opinion of exactly why it should be legal or maybe why it shouldn't be, uh, so we can have a, a better discussion around. It. I'm really happy we're having this discussion actually, because control legality is one of the few areas uh, in the rule set which has been fully standardized. And honestly, the the melee rule set's been pretty standard for a long time. We've had pretty much the same rule set for like five years. So this is one of those you know blemishes that I feel like we can iron out and all come to a consensus, um, you know, through a little bit of discussion and. Um, you know, I'm going to talk about my side of the, the argument uh, right now, uh, but I'm more than open to, you know, bringing on Gravy on the Commentator's Curse or in any other stream, and we could talk it out and, you know, share both sides and see, uh, see you know, what, what they have to say, and, and I can talk about what I have to say. Um, so, just to start off, uh, why are game controls bad, and why does this Smashbox thing exist, and why, you know, why even make a new product? You know, haven't we been using game controls for 15 years? What is the problem? Well, uh, the more we learn about game controllers, the less we like, li like about them, it turns out. Uh, the smash turns are inconsistent, uh, and there's a lot of analog stick degradation. Uh, the potentium, pen potential meter, or however you say it, uh, has a so-called glitch uh, that makes uh, more inconsistencies. It's hard to hit precise analog inputs, so sometimes you have to use your very small and precise um, motions with your thumb in order to hit that exact angle. And uh, most importantly, maybe, in my opinion, they're hard on the hands. You know, the game controller is not fantastic for the hands. Uh, there's a lot of handheld problems among our top players, and I think the game controller is a big reason behind it, right? So it comes, here comes Smashbox. Uh, they come in with a new controller. It's uh, with a stick. Um, you know, it, it's kind of like a stick. It, you, you, you can imagine it like this. This, this is an this, this arcade stick. You take the stick out, you add like a hundred more buttons. It's, it's basically what they made. Uh, it's, it's kind of similar to that. Um, this arcade stick, by the way, Mike Ross hooked me up. So, shout out to Mike Ross for letting me have this. He had two that he gave me. So, the homie. Miss you, dude. Um, so, it's, it's kind of like that. It it's mostly resembles a fight stick. Um, but, again, it does not have a stick. It just has buttons. Um, now, the hitbox controller that they made uh, has been now... Except for the FTC, some people use it, most don't, but otherwise, you know, it's, it's, it's an available option for people. Um, and so, for Smash players, uh, most look at it and think, okay, cool, uh, this is a new option, a new way to play, it's kind of like a, just a different controller to do the same thing. Uh, what's the downside? What's, you know, why not, right? Why not? Let's just have a new control scheme. In, in the FTC, people can play on pad, people can play on stick, people can play on hitbox, whatever. Anything's open, right? You know, uh, you can play on whatever you want. Um... The difference is, and I think this is a really key difference between the Melee and the FTC in this matter, is that um, there's no control customization in Melee, actually. So you can't just go into a menu and change your controls. You can't change buttons, layouts. You can't you know, just accept any input quite that easily. And in fact, pretty much the game control is the only thing that is easily taken in, right? Anything else you want to do, if you want to make a controller like the, like the Smashbox or whatever, uh, you have to pretty much electrically engineer to emulate a GameCube controller in some form. Uh, at least give give the give the system, uh, you know, uh, the, the the correct inputs, uh, and it, it has to take it from there. You know, it, you can't just do it on a software level. You can't just go into a menu and do it, right? So, no control customization in game, and also probably most importantly is uh, analog versus digital. So, uh, a Smash controller, I've got to have my hand and dandy one right here. Uh, it's got the black, the red Gundam back. You guys, you guys appreciate that. Uh, it's uh, it's got these analog sticks and these analog triggers, right? 
So we don't got buttons. We I mean we got buttons, but we uh, we also don't got buttons. Uh, we have analog sticks and analog triggers, so that makes them uh, very different uh, than uh, what a normal uh, fight stick would be, uh, which just really just reads cardinal directions on the on the stick and and uh, the buttons on the that you use with your your right hand. So big big differences there, um, and mo and because of this also that that we've created a history fifteen years of people using GameCube controllers, right? So. We have everybody currently, 100% of our community, uses GameCube controllers. When a new FGC game comes out, um, they automatically are allowed to use pad and allowed to use uh, stick and allowed to use uh, you know, whatever they want because it's built into the game, right? Whereas with us, you start the game out, you can only use a GameCube controller, and that's it. Until maybe you learn about the competitive community, you learn about Smashbox or whatever. But for the most part, game built around GameCube controllers, right? It's not like a new person who's coming into the community as a pad player and feels forced to use a stick because you already you ban pads, right? Because you because you, ban, you you can't ban pads because then you ban an entire subset of players who are coming into the community, right? And so I mean this goes th this means a, a, a number of things, and one of the most important things it means is that once once you actually allow the Smashbox. Or you allow a certain type of controller, you'll, you 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 set a precedent. Otherwise, you kind of have to continue to allow it uh, because you start getting a subset of players who use that control scheme, and once you ban it away from them, you're basically banning their ability to play, right? So, if the Smash Box was legal, um, and let's say we have 10, 20 percent, whatever percentage of the community using it, uh, it would become much more uh, difficult to ban the controller, right? You. Be able to, you basically be telling 10 to 20% of the community, F you, we're banning the controller, go back to a game controller, right? So in this respect, I think that very much we need to make this decision now uh, because once we get to the point where people get uh, actually adopt the controller and, and start using it, uh, we can't really turn back or it becomes very unfair to turn back. Similarly, I think this is uh, where I find fault in the argument of, hey, this control controller isn't even that good, what's the big deal? Let's just try it out and see if it causes any problems. Well, the issue with that is, first of all, to, for, to, see, if it to see if it causes any problems uh, requires probably a pretty good player, someone who invests a lot of time, and then you have to draw a line of how good, you know, how good of a performance is, is your line, right? I don't think rule sets and legality should be based around you know, this guy got 17th place, so therefore this control is illegal, right? You know, there comes a point where you, you have to actually abide by philosophies instead of by an arbitrary line of how well or poorly someone performed, right? Um, using the controller, right? Uh, this is to say that, you know, all of a sudden Smashbox comes in, all these guys start performing better, and now we ban it, right? I don't think that's fair. I think that, that would actually be quite backwards uh, to do it like that. Uh, we have to kind of, we, I think... All rule sets and all rule set decisions should follow a very strict philosophy. So going off that, I think that it's important to break down this conversation, sort of work backwards and say, what are the different types of controller mods? Which one of those does uh, Smashbox have? And which, which type of mods are we actually comfortable with? Uh, and what aren't we, right? And so I think there's about six types of mods. Uh, maybe there's more, but I think there's about six, right? These are case mods, uh, macros, button remapping, analog to digital conversion, so and software modifications, and this little six one is the bucket which I put everything else in, and that's miscellaneous motherboard mods. So to break it down a little bit, what are each of these things? Uh, case mods are things that are currently legal. Uh, that means you can, you know, you can make your make anything on the outside that's not the motherboard. You can kind of you can change it almost any way you like, right? Uh, so this means shield drop not, not sure illegal. This means uh, triggers being shortened are legal. Things like that, right? These are modifications to physical components uh, that are not you know touching the motherboard. Uh, that's a case mod, right? Reason they're legal, and by the way, they weren't before. Uh, matter of fact, our good friend Manicloud uh, used to do these sort of modifications all the time. This is, case mods have actually been around for a long time. They were called mana mods back in the day, and for you guys who don't know, a lot of the pros back in 07 actually did use mana mods, and it was a big controversy. Uh, like, uh, he, he just, 
you know, modern people's controllers uh, and, and did things around that, and people had a big issue with it. You know, they, they threw a big sting. Now, people then start talking in more in more modern times uh, about case mods, and uh, the issue came up of Silent Wolf's controller, where he used a circular control stick uh, gate, uh, circular control stick gate. So this little thing. I think it's supposed to be a, an octagon. Uh, he made it circular, right? And me personally, I said, you know what? That should be legal because the fact of the matter is, if you play long enough, your octagon becomes circular anyway. It's circular anyways, right? Uh, if your octagon becomes circular by by wear and tear, why shouldn't someone just be able to file it away and make it circular, you know, themselves? So we said, you know what, Silent Wolf, you're your uh, gate, you can make it circular. He did this because he wanted to be able to do DI that you, he wouldn't otherwise be able to get access to. You know, the, the gate actually blocks you from doing certain DIs. So, you know, he made, he made this modification and overall, uh, there was, that, you know, different from the norm, we said, you know what, Silent Wolf, you can, do your, you can do your case mod, you can make a circular control stick. Now, this led to a lot of other discussion, which is saying, okay, so if I can do that, can I make a shield drop mod? Which is saying that I, now I want to make my gate, but I want to ma actually make a little notch over here. I want to make it a circle, circle for the rest of it, or close to, but I want a notch over here, right? And to that, we're like, well, if you can do the circle, you should all obviously be able to do the, the notch. Uh, because at the end of the day, if you did the correct wear and tear, you could get a notch yourself too. And uh, similarly, you know, this kind of evens the playing field a little bit and uh, lets people who have bad octagonal gates be able to modify it so that they can they can have a shield drop notch, right? So this is, was actually a, a rather modern change. Uh, in general, case mods were illegal for a very, very long time. And uh, they were made legal more recently. And I was actually one of the biggest promote proponents for it. I said they should be legal uh, for the reasons I stated. Um, so they became legal. And now, you know, there's some negatives to it, right? You know, if you join the community, you might have to talk to Kadano or like, one of the random booths at, a, at an event to, to mod your controller. Uh, it's not exactly super approachable now. Like you can't just plug in the controller you bought and play the game at this, on the same playing field as, as everyone else. So we took some hits. We took some hits by making that decision. And I think you take some hits whenever you make any of these decisions, but it is what it is. It hasn't, hasn't really made it altogether so bad. And that's mostly because case mods at the surface level can only really change so much, right? At the, like, you can only do so much by chiseling away at the case of the case of this thing, right? You can't really change that much because you can't change the fundamental motion of the tech skill, right? Next category are macros. Uh, so macros mean inputting a direct sequence of inputs back to back. So if you did made your A into A and then B, uh, then that's a macro, right? If you made your A into A B Y, that's also a macro, right? Similarly, it's just it's just doing a, a consecutive uh, repeat um, motion and making it a macro. Things like a multi-shine button, things like a um, wave shine button or whatever, you know, that wouldn't even be that good, but um, you know, that, that would be a macro. And for the most part, everyone agrees that should be banned. Similarly, turbo buttons, uh, you could argue that that's a macro in itself because it's just AAA repeating. Um, most people agree that should be banned, right? Uh, button remapping means switching your your buttons. So that's making your B into an A and your A into a B. For example, you know you could you could switch around your buttons. Uh, this one, I'm of the opinion should be illegal, but I mean our rule sets don't really cover this stuff, so uh, you guys can take it for what you will. Uh, and then there's uh, analog to digital conversion. So that this is something the Smashbox does, and this is something I'll talk about more later but it's taking your analog inputs and making them into digital inputs. So if you want your full forward into, to be a button, you can make it a button. So if you want full forward to be a button, you add a button and you can make that happen. Um, software modifications are a little crazy. I won't really cover that much in this video, but basically it's putting another computer inside your controller. So if you want to do something crazy, crazy, crazy stuff with your controller, you could do that with a software mod. I think almost everyone understands that that should be absolutely illegal. Um, uh, again, it's not really written down anywhere, but a software mod would be like, let's say, programming your rumble to react to certain situations, or uh, it's making your, let, let's say you do a pivot, and you miss your, the timing on your pivot forward smash. 
uh, it will do a force smash uh, or do, do a smash attack in, in case you missed your pivot timing, you know, or something like that. Uh, or it, it maybe it holds back an input because of the pulling difference, right? It says, I, you know what, software mod, I can tell that I got pulled at this time and I'm going to change it up. Either way, there's, I don't want to open up Pandora's box, but software modifications, people I think generally understand they should be banned. Smashbox doesn't do this. And there's Michelet's motherboard mods like capacitors uh, for your uh, control stick, things like that. Again, Smashbox doesn't really touch this. So uh, the, one, the, the main ones I'm going to focus on are button remapping and analog to digital conversion and uh, their consequences, right? So to be clear, if Smashbox is legal, you should be able to do analog to digital conversion on any controller. Similarly, if Smashbox is legal, you should be able to button remap on any controller. Um, it does not make sense to say this one particular controller is legal, but on this, on this other controller, you can't button remap. On this other controller, you can't do analog to digital conversion. Why? Like, that doesn't make any sense, right? You have to uh, uphold a certain philosophy. You have to be able to do, some, uh, do these things consistently. And me personally, I mean, just to be clear, I also really don't think the danger of the Smashbox is all that high. I think it's kind of, just, just from looking at it, it looks like it's really difficult to use. It's rather clunky. And um, so my fears are really not based in uh, its ability to, you know, make people good all of a sudden, uh, but rather that it does these two, these two particular things. It, it does analog digital conversion and button remaps, right? And I don't think those things should be illegal. And that, that, that's my fundamental difference, right? So what are the consequences of allowing analog to digital conversion? Um, on the Smashbox, uh, it makes you know, your forward into a forward. It, makes, you know, it has particular buttons that, do, you know, that can do your angles and, uh, of the, the stick more correctly. If you want to watch exactly what the Smashbox does, you can watch the video. But that's really not the point. The point is that it makes an, uh, an analog input into a digital input, right? So for me, if that is opened up, I actually don't care about the Smashbox. I would make a whole new controller that could do some broken stuff, right? Uh, maybe I'd play Ice Climbers. Ice Climbers, if you guys don't know, and I can link this down there too, uh, have a particular desync they can do on, uh, I think like it's the 181st button, uh, 181st uh, diagonal or upwards, <laughs> where they can do a jump desync. Uh, Flyme discovered it like 2014, 2013, something like that, um, where if you are you hit that particular uh, indice, the Popo will jump, but Nana won't, right? So you can make Popo jump, but Nana won't. And this is amazing because that means you can make Popo wave dash and Nana can do something else. You can do a smash attack, something like that, right? So by hitting this exact uh, coordinate, you're able to do a desync with no setup. This revolutionized Ice Climbers. Like, Ice Climbers could do crazy, crazy things. I, you know, I, you guys can look at the threads. Uh, to see examples, but ICs would do desync that like you've never seen before. They've become a much, much, much better character. Um, you can also, you know, do things like bring a, bring in a shield drop button, right? Well, why not? You, shield drop is a particular coordinate on the analog plane, so why not just have a shield drop button? You can have a shield drop button. Matter of fact, someone's already done it before. Uh, I think there's a Reddit thread by uh, Stabby who we make and he makes a shield drop button. Hitbox basically has a shield drop button. Now you still have to hold shield and you still have to do. Uh, hit the hit the coordinate, but hit the hit the button that coordinate corresponds to the coordinate. But it's a very different fundamental tech skill than the GameCube controller, right? Um, it's just a button, so you can have a shield drop button. You can ha do pivots easier uh, with if if you had this mod. So again, let's throw the Smashbox away because I don't actually think that's the thing that I'm worried about. I'm worried about taking this monster right here and modifying it to become the ultimate machine, right? And what I would do is, if I, if, I, if I wanted to pivot better, is I'd have a button, probably behind my controller, I, I don't think I'll put it on the face of my controller, uh, uh, that would be for, on one side be full right, on this side I'd make it full left, and then so when I hit left, I'd hit back here for full, for, for full right, and then by the time I'm done with that, I'm already holding up tilt with, with my uh, up and my control stick in A, and guess what, my pivots are going to come out every time if I have that. If I'm able to basically not have to deal with the, the, the movement of the analog stick and I have like a, a direct button back here that lets me do that, I guarantee you I can pivot every time. I guarantee you, right? Uh, you can also add a button for the slight DI on Mars chain grab for spaces. So spaces could 
slight DI, Mars Chain Grab, to make it much harder. Uh, th there's a particular and very difficult DI to get that makes Mars Chain Grab much, much more difficult uh, for humans. And so you could do that. Uh, you could, um, well, you know, you, you could do a ton of things. The point is, it opens up a lot of opportunities, right? And what I would see happening, more likely, is people would uh, reconfigure their D-pad. They'd make their D-pad do a whole bunch of things. They'd definitely do a, a shield drop button. They would do a ton of things with this thing. And they would add buttons to the back. They'd add buttons all over the place. Um, and now with button remapping, which is something that Hitbox also does, they would start replacing buttons. They would say, you know what? I only use Y. I'm going to make X do something else. Right? X is going to be a different button. You know what? I'm, I play Fox, so I need, I'm, and I'm bad at double lasering, and I'm bad at multi-shining, so I'm going to make my A be my B. Or you know what? Screw that. I'm going to make my a button behind my controller be my B. So I just have to play B and, and hit the button in the back and I'm doing my multi shines, right? Or again, like you, like I said, you can make your A your B and you just, you go like this and you don't have to deal with the distance between Y and B, which everyone struggles with, right? So that's, you know, that gets opened up. Um, you could even with analog digital um, or in general, just by adding buttons, you can make a null button. This one's actually super scary. It's a button that tells the controller to not transmit any inputs, right? It's the it's saying don't do anything. So you hold left, you're still holding left. Then you put the push the null button. So now you're now the controller is reading that you're holding nothing, and then when you release it, you're holding left again, right? Uh, there's a lot of different uses for this, a lot of different ways it could be used. But the point is that's a that's something that be opened up. Uh, let's talk about if we, that should be allowed. Um, you could put jump behind your controller. That's probably really good. What if you also made your Z button do something different. You know, Z is in, in a really optimal spot. You can make it do something different. You can, you can add a button up here so you can have a second Z button. Maybe that one's your grab. Maybe this Z button's your jump, right? What if, what if that's your jump and you just use A and B with your thumb, uh, opening up fingers and, and letting you do more? Um, point is, you allow analog to digital and you allow button remaps and all of a sudden the tech skill that we've all practiced becomes very different. And to me, this is where I start disagreeing with the direction, right? And I think the main arguments are, okay, it helps with handheld, like I said, and it helps uh, become, be more consistent with tech skill uh, in, in an uh, unher inherently inconsistent system with the game controller being so inconsistent, right? Uh, and for reasons we described. Um, and I think that that's valid, it's true. It does make it more consistent. And you know what, what also would make you more consistent? Macros. If I had a multi-shine macro, I'd be more consistent. You know what also would save my hands? Macros. Also, make, I'd be way more consistent. Um, almost any modification you do makes you more consistent. That's the point of the modification. If it wasn't a good controller, you wouldn't be using it, right? Um, so I, I think that, that that's obvious, right? Uh, now, the Smashbox in particular, like I said, it's got so many downsides that I don't know if anyone would even use it, but it's more the fundamentals of what it does and what it opens up. I don't think that you can make the Smashbox legal without making button remapping and analog digital legal. And I don't, I personally don't think it's, I, I, I want to be in a community which re, remaps the A button like that and things like that. And you might say, you know what, Blur, why, why not? Why, why can't we remap our A button? You could do that in Smash 4. You can go in the menu and just remap. What's the, what's the problem? And my biggest problem with it is that I don't think electrical engineering is a skill we need to test, right? If it was in the menu, maybe we'd have a different conversation. But it's not, right? Like, that's not the game we're playing. And so, in order to actually, like, get better tech skill, you have to learn how to solder. You have to learn how to rewire your motherboard. And you know what? Sure, the Smashbox, they want to distribute their controller. But what if, you, what if someone does it? What if there's someone who says, no, how about I'm going to keep this to myself? Uh, I, I'm going to modify my controller. I'm going to add, like, seven, ten more buttons onto this thing. If they're all going to do unique things. Gonna have, I'm going to have a perfect wave dash button. I'm going to have a... Uh, a, a um, a shield drop button. I'm mean, gonna have all those things, and you know what? I'm not. Uh, I'm not really gonna tell you what they do. This is my custom controller. Screw you. Uh, it, it fulfills. Uh, you know the rule set. It doesn't have a macro. It doesn't have a software mod. But yeah, it has button remapping. It has analog to digital conversion. So, if people could do that, you know, then I think we have a whole different game. I think it actually becomes the meta game, and, that, and that, that's my biggest fear: is it truly becomes a meta game? Because to me. That is the easiest way to get better. If if you actually had a ledge dash button, you would perform far better, in my opinion, right? Especially uh, the higher level of skill you get, where it's harder and harder to get better. Um, and and I, I'm super worried about that. Now, yes, 
everyone would be able to do it. But guess what? Then, you know, everyone's not good at electrical engineering. Everyone doesn't have a homie that can, that can mod controllers for them. Not everyone can, can go and, you know, uh, talk to a vendor and, and get that to happen. Or, like, all of a sudden you realize, oh, man, my controller is good, but I just, I just met a guy who has a, another modification. I, I need to add that on, right? How do you get that to happen? As an average player, you have a hard time making those adjustments. And Melee is such a hard and technical game. You want to. You'll want to. You'll mess up too many times and get frustrated too many times that if this is an out, if an out is to modify your controller and to make these major changes, you'll do it, right? And for me, like, I just think that we get to a point where I don't really know if I recognize the game we play anymore, right? Um, so I think there's, there, again, the, the, other, the other parts of the argument I think that we can fix gradually. Like, they, people say it's hard in your hands. Well... You can use the mutating example, but last I checked, I was there and smashed up the whole time. I'm not even sure if he met with the hand doctor that we flew out the, flew out for him. We had flew out a hand doctor, and the top player didn't even see it, right? And and forgetting that, like, what if there's case mods that can help handheld? Have we even really thought and given this this poor controller a chance? Like, your your triggers. I think your triggers really hurt your hands. What if you know lowering the spring on the triggers is is really good for handheld? I think it is. I think you know maybe giving. You know, uh, making your hard press easier to access. Maybe that's good for your hands. Like, let, let, what, what if also not playing for 14 hours straight is good for your hands? Like, let's, but we think all that through instead of saying this is the reason we're doing it. I think almost any mod is going to be good for your hands. You know, that, that's obvious. Um, but that doesn't mean it's right. That doesn't mean it's good for the community. It doesn't mean that's, that's progress. Uh, similarly, like, those other discussions about Smasher and things like that, I think that's a different discussion because then we're talking about, hey, you know, things like Kadana with greasing the, the, the control stick box. That's still a case mod, by the way, um, because it doesn't touch the, the motherboard in any way. Or maybe you do make an exception with a motherboard mod, and you say the capacitor is available. Maybe that's the adjustment we make. What, the adjustment we don't make, the adjustment we don't make, in my opinion, is allowing analog to digital and allowing button remapping, because that opens a Pandora's box that no one will ever believe, right? It allows you to do things that, you, that are crazy. They're absolutely crazy with this controller. Uh, you can do things that... Uh, like I said, this would change Ice Climber's entire, this whole, whole metagame. Changes immediately. And forgetting that, it also would change Fox a lot. Like, have you noticed that everything I've said has made Fox a lot better? Like, the, the, the inconsistencies and controls are a natural nerf to Fox. And maybe, just maybe, the game is balanced around the inconsistency of the game controller because it's the only one that's available to us. Uh, you know, it's, it's not pretty to say, but that this is like, this is a natural fault in our game. And yes, we've, fil we've dealt with it 15 years. Maybe we continue dealing with it. Maybe we look for other solutions, like I said, with case models and other things. But I don't want to live in a world, uh, and again, you guys can disagree. I don't want to live in a world with a shield drop button. I don't want to live in a world where pivoting has a button behind a controller. And a new player, we're like, yeah, pivoting is pretty hard, but go and talk to my homie in the black market, and he can install it into your controller for you. And you have some Frankenstein monster, which you don't even know works. Uh, and that, that's what you're playing with, right? And that's all you have left for you. Uh, so... I mean, to summarize, I just think that tech skill and the fundamental tech skill in Smash Brothers is really, really important. Like it's, it's something we test. Uh, I think being able to hit precise analog inputs and you know getting them exactly is part of the skill of the game. Being able to perfect wave dash is a skill. Being able to shield drop is a skill. And you know what? Shield dropping took a, shield drop notches took that skill. Uh, a little bit down, but that's a compromise we had to make because, again, like I said, we couldn't find a way to to make uh, to even the playing field with uh, with case mods, so we made them legal. But when you open this up, you you go a whole different direction, right? You you allow ten x more, twenty x more uh, modification, and I think if the Smash Box was a little bit different, maybe it had one to one inputs, like currently has one to many inputs, right? Like <laughs> you, to do a simple motion, many times, like a wave dash has many more inputs on, on the Smash Box. Uh, it's it's uh, it, it's not exactly a one to one, and like it, it, it it's because of the analog conversion, uh, it has to do more inputs. Uh, you know, if maybe if it was one to one, it'd be better. Uh, but overall, it's a butter remap no matter what you do, right? It's a Analog digital, no matter what, unless unless you want to add a stick to it, it's analog digital, right? Uh, and I think that goes against what they want to do with it anyway. So um, I, I think it's a 
really cool piece of technology, and I think it's awesome to be able to play Smash Brothers on a stick. But for me, when I think about designing rule sets and I think about making everything consistent and fair for everyone, I don't know how I can make a rule set fair with Smashbox Legal, right? And the only way is to say, hey, analog digital is allowed and butter remapping is allowed. Uh, because otherwise, you have no consistency. You're not going to put in your rule set that, you know, this is legal, but not allow other controls that are similar to not be legal. You can't do that. So, I, uh, I think it's, it's, a, it's a problem. It's a problem, and I'm not surprised that people are pushing for it. I'm not surprised that people are touting how consistent their tech skill is, uh, because obviously you're going to be a little bit better with a modified controller. I guarantee you, you could design... 20 times better GameCube controller if you really want to. You can, you can, especially with butter remapping, especially with analog digital conversions. And if you touch the, the motherboard and you make software mods, you can do something crazy. Uh, but you lose something in the process. You lose some of the skill that we've all built, right? You, you lose that fundamental stuff. And I, I probably sound really conservative when I'm saying that, but I think that in many other games and many other systems, you have to start drawing the line somewhere, right? I felt like I was super liberal at being the guy who, who doubt, touted case mods, but I guess in the world where case mods are legal, people look for the next thing, which is this, right? And I think once this is legal, people are going to look for macros, because guess what? It helps your hands. <laughs> like, what is the argument for macros to be illegal, but not analog to digital conversion uh, uh, and, uh, and butter remapping? Like, the reason why we, why are macros illegal? Macros are illegal because we think it changes the fundamental tech skill of the game. We think it makes certain things too easy. Um, we think it, you know, it's not a one-to-one -one button remap of, of, of technical skill, right? Uh, well, the, 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 the Smashbox isn't a one-to-one -one remap either, right? And it does make some things easier. And it, it, like, it does everything, everything you can say is bad about macros is Almost all of them are also bad by button remapping and analog digital conversion, right? So how can you have macro? Like, what's what's the problem with macros then? Why not have a macro? Um, I, I don't I don't see why you wouldn't want a macro. A matter of fact, when I think about like mods you you can make to a controller potentially, and ones which would help you the most in getting better at the game, like as in how much like where your skill would jump and how, how much your technical proficiency would get better. Um, analog digital conversion and button remapping are going to affect your tech skill a lot more than any macro would in Melee, right? Like, the good macros in Melee would be what? Like, fire stalling. That would be absolutely broken. If someone if you had a macro that could just automatically fire stall for you perfectly every time, that'd be broken. Um, you'd have, you know, the maybe a double laser one, I guess. I don't know. Uh, double laser would probably be a little broken because you can use your analog stick to move while double lasering is a macro. Multi-shining would probably be broken. There's a few macros that'd be pretty bad. But I don't think there any of them are nearly as as uh, crazy as some of the stuff you do with analog digital, right? This literally changes ice climbers entirely, right? Like it's just the whole character, uh, and and so it, it's there's a big difference. Shield dropping, entire motion, different. So it becomes a button. That is a huge difference. Pivoting, all opened up, right? What's what's what do you think is mo you know? Um, and also, by the way, with button remapping. Uh, you, your multi shotting and your and your double laser becomes so much easier that I'm not even sure you'd want a macro, you know, for it. You'd be like, oh, I can do this consistently anyway. Why build a macro button for my on it when I can do it anyway, right? Like, what would you? You, I think you'd probably be Firebird song. That's pretty much it. Like, there's there's very few macros at that point with with the way melee works. Like wave shotting, you need to make the right wave dash distance to deal with the uh, the different smash GIs. There's very few actual macros you'd make. Uh, that would affect anything. Macros aren't at nearly as big a deal uh, compared to uh, analog digital conversion and, and button remapping. So, yeah, I don't know. I, I've been on a bit of a rant. I think that uh, a further discussion needs to be had, but I at least want to get my side out there because uh, I think the other side hasn't been given so far. People haven't really understood why the Smashbox shouldn't be legal, right? Um, and I think for the most part, most people look at it and be like, dude, that thing's not going to make you better at the game. Nothing's so hard in the first place. The Smashbox, I'm saying. Um, and I agree with them. But it, it, it does things which should be illegal, right? It, it, does, it does functionality, which in my opinion should be illegal. Um, doesn't mean, you know, like, it, it's basically to me, 
a very hard controller to use. You can make a much easier controller to use that, that does those same, does does similar things like a shield drop button, and that that you can't you can't live in a world where one is legal and one isn't. One isn't. So uh, that's my main problem. Uh, I'd love to hear feedback from you guys um, and, and see what you guys think. But um, 